Today in the kitchen, we are talking comfort food. And one of my favorite comfort foods is chicken pot pie. Now the typical chicken pot pie recipe will feed about six people. Way too much for us empty nesters. So I'm taking a recipe, my favorite chicken pot pie recipe and scaling it down for two. Hi, I'm Leanne from yourhomebasemom.com. And after becoming empty nesters, I realized I stopped making a lot of my very favorite comfort foods simply because it made too much food. I mean, I love lasagna, but who wants to eat it for seven nights in a row? That's why I came up with my lasagna for two recipe you can find right up there. So today we're making one of my other favorite comfort foods, chicken pot pie, but we're scaling that recipe down for two. So join me in the kitchen where we're making small batch recipes with big taste. Okay, so the basis of a chicken pot pie is a pie crust. And we know that the best kind of pie crust is a homemade kind of pie crust, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and you're gonna use a store-bought pie crust. Now, if you wanna make your own homemade pie crust, click on that little video up there. I've got a video showing you how I make my perfect pie crust. But today, it's one of those days we're gonna use a store-bought pie crust. And you can find these in the refrigerator section of the grocery store, and they usually come with two in a box. And you wanna be able to take it out a little bit prior to making your pot pie so that it has time to kind of come to room temperature and to soften up a bit. Because if you try to unroll it while it is cold, it is just going to crack. And even if you unroll it while it's warmed up, you may get a few cracks on it. No worries, it just take your rolling pin. It'll be sandwiched between two pieces of plastic and just give it a little bit of a roll to kind of smooth it out, even it out, and bring it all together so it's all in one piece. So we're gonna use our nine by five a loaf pan to make this chicken pot pie in. So we wanna give it a nice spray of nonstick cooking spray. And then we are going to take our pie crust and just lay it inside of our pie pan so that it kind of drapes evenly on both sides. It's gonna crack a little bit probably as you're doing it. Get it down in, push it down into your pie dish. All right, and just make sure you get those corners down in so that's all the way touching the pie dish. And then we're just gonna leave this other plastic on it to prevent our um, pie crust from drying out as we make our chicken pot pie filling. We are ready to make our chicken pot pie filling. So I've got my cast iron skillet heating up. You can use any kind of skillet you have. We are just gonna add in about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. Now we're gonna use two carrots I've peeled and chopped. One stalk of celery. I'm not a huge celery lover, so if you like celery, throw more in. And about a quarter cup of chopped onion. Now, a lot of um, chicken pot pie has peas in it. I am not a fan of peas, so I'm not putting any in this today. But if you do like peas, I uh, usually use frozen peas and you add those in at the very end when we add the chicken and you don't want to add it in right now. So we are just going to cook these vegetables until they are nice and fork tender. So as our vegetables are cooking here too, we are going to um, lightly salt and pepper them. I'm using about a quarter teaspoon of each salt and pepper. Now, after we have it fully assembled, you want to go ahead and taste it to see if you need any additional salt or pepper. You want to cook your vegetables just until they're barely fork tender because this is going to bake once it's put together in the oven for about another 40 minutes. So it's okay if they're still a little, not quite as cooked as you usually like them. So we're going to remove all of this from our pan and then we're going to get ready to make our cream sauce. Now we're also, of course, going to need to use chicken in this. And I've got my chicken already prepped. Um, if you you've got some leftover chicken from something or in the freezer. And I'm gonna also link to down below some of my favorite ways I like to make shredded chicken. One of the ways is in the crock pot, one's in the Instapot, pot, but my most favorite way is in the microwave. And so I will link to that one too down below. But we're gonna, this is about one chicken breast or a very kind of full cup of cooked chicken. So to make our sauce, we're going to start with, this is a very generous tablespoon of butter that we're going to melt into our pan. And into that, we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. This is going to create what we call a roux, which is going to be the thickener for our cream sauce in our um, chicken pot pie. Go ahead and just kind of keep stirring it and it's going to form a, like a paste. You want to kind of scrape up any of that um, vegetable that's still on the bottom of the pan because that's going to add some additional flavor. And just cook it till it all comes together. The butter's all melted. And then we are ready to add in our liquid, which is a cup and a half of chicken broth. 
And we're going to go ahead and I just like to use my um, little whisk here to whisk this all together to get it nice and smooth and all mixed together. And then as it cooks, you're going to want to bring it to a low boil and it is going to start to thicken up. Then as we let it come to a boil, we can add in our milk or cream or whatever you want to use. And then our seasoning. And I'm using about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried parsley, and then about a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme. I love the flavor that the thyme gives it. Then mix that all together and let it come to a boil. So once it has thickened up, now remember it is gonna bake for longer so it will thicken up even more as it bakes. So I've got it nice, just where it's slightly thickened but not too thick. We're going to add in our cooked vegetables. Now, if you were using peas, this is the point at which you would add in the peas, but like I say, I'm not, not a fan of peas. Then we're gonna add in our chicken, mix that all together, and it is ready then to pour into our crust. And I'd give it a taste right now just to see if you think it needs a little bit more salt or not, but I think we're good. I've removed the plastic up of our pie crust and just make sure that you don't have any cracks or holes or anything, especially in the bottom of it, because we don't want any of our filling to escape out of there. So we're just gonna take our filling now and fill up our loaf pan. Now you can do this part ahead of time, the filling, and then just when you're ready to bake your um, chicken pot pie, put it in. Now, if you have refrigerated your filling, it's gonna take a little bit longer to bake, just you know, maybe five, 10 minutes or so, so that it can you know, come to up to temperature. But we'll just go ahead and fill that up. And this nice heavy cast iron pan, get all of it in there. All right. Then we are gonna take our pie crust. I've kind of done it so that it's even on the sides, so there's no overlap on the sides. If there is, just kind of tuck it under or you can cut it off. And then you want the overlap on the long side of the pan. And we're just going to pull that over and lay it down. If it cracks a bit, that's okay. Just kind of push it together. And then on the other side, it's just gonna kind of overlap a little bit like an envelope there. And then again, any cracks, just pinch them together. Then this is ready to go into the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes or until the crust is really nice and golden brown. If you think the crust is browning too quickly before the inside is totally heated through and stuff, go ahead and cover it with a piece of foil for like the last 10 minutes or so if you need to. Our chicken pot pie is done. It's out of the oven. It smells amazing and we're ready to serve it. Now you always wanna make sure that you let it sit for about 10 minutes after you pull it out of the oven because it needs a chance for those that gravy there to thicken up just a little bit. It's gonna make it easier to serve also. Now you can see this makes a very generous, generous, generous two servings. Usually at our house, it feeds us for two meals, which is just enough leftovers without being too much leftovers. So um, to serve, I usually cut it into fourths. It seems to be a one good serving. So in half and then in half again. Then we're just gonna take it on out and there you have it how amazing does that look so good perfect comfort food and just the right amount of it so we'll see you in the next video